When I was a kid, I used to visit a bear named Smokey. He lived in a cage in a park near my hometown, and my family and I would watch him pace around on a concrete slab in a little round cage. It didn't occur to me that he was deprived of anything, even though there was virtually nothing to keep him occupied other than a tire swing and a bowling ball. He died in that cage without ever having set foot outside of it for who knows how long. I eventually realized that bears deserve more than to be locked inside of a cage for human amusement. And now that I work for the PETA Foundation, I get to help rescue bears and other animals from roadside zoos and other awful places. You'd think that every successful rescue would be thrilling for me, but it's more complicated than that. A few years ago, I met Fifi. I had never seen an animal in person who looked so sad. She was skinny and dirty, and she lived in a tiny cage with nothing to protect her from the sun, the rain, or the snow. Her only shelter was a little box that was made of rotting wood with old wet hay for bedding. She moved really slowly and she stumbled from arthritis. But even though it hurt her to walk, she was curious and outgoing and she came right over to sniff and interact with me. Fifi and three other bears had been forced to perform in a show at a Pennsylvania roadside zoo. They were trained through pain and fear to do so-called tricks like riding a bicycle. When they were cubs, they were muzzled, chained, and yanked onto their hind legs and forced to stay in that position. And that's how they learned to walk on two legs. It was either that or choke the moment they tried to put their front paws down. When the roadside zoo closed, the four bears were locked into tiny cages for 20 years. And for 20 years, they were denied everything a bear could want or need. When PETA learned that their owner was getting rid of them after all that time, we got in touch with one of our sanctuary friends and together we sprang into action. Within just a few days, all four bears were on their way to the sanctuary. Part of me was elated for them, but I was also filled with anxiety. Their whole worlds were being turned upside down. They'd spent decades interacting only with the people who were neglecting and abusing them, and now they were surrounded by strangers. It must have been terrifying for them. We always have veterinarians travel with the animals, so I knew that any veterinary needs would be taken care of, but still, there were so many things that could go wrong especially because Fifi was 30 years old at the time, which is ancient for a bear, but she was amazing. First of all, when the sanctuary staff picked her up in Pennsylvania, instead of hesitating like many bears do, she was brave and she got right into her transport cage even though she couldn't have had any idea what was about to happen. Everything was strange and new to her. The noise of the truck on the highway and the sensation of movement, when she got to the sanctuary, I was relieved to see how well she did. As soon as she was released, she attacked a big bucket of food and submerged herself in a little tub of water. Bears love water, but this was probably the first time in her life that she was able to take a bath on her own terms instead of being shot at with a hose or stuck outside in the rain. That first year after she hibernated, again, likely for the first time ever, she came out of her den a completely new bear. She had a beautiful coat and a big body to match her big personality. After 30 years, she was finally a real bear. As much joy as I get from helping PETA rescue animals, it's still hard to think about the ones whose stories didn't have a happy ending. Like Smokey. He lived during a time when most people didn't speak out against keeping animals in those cruel conditions. Some people were undoubtedly oblivious to the suffering that these conditions cause, but others realized it, they just didn't say anything. And I know this from replies on my Facebook page when I asked people from back home whether they had any photos of Smokey. People who remembered him commented about how sad they felt whenever they saw him, and I wondered what would have happened if they had spoken out. If they would have protested and agitated at city council meetings, Smokey might have been moved to a better facility or at least had his living conditions improved. 
that could have happened. And maybe a kid like me would have joined in the fight instead of feeling guilty decades later about having been part of the problem. And that's why I use my voice now. When I see animals who are suffering, I know that I can change their lives if I speak up and I can influence others to consider the rights of animals. So can you. You don't have to work at an animal rights organization to make a difference. You can just use your voice. There was another bear in my childhood who I spent a lot of time with. It was a, a North American black bear who was shot and killed by my dad and playing on this bearskin rug was how I first learned what a bear was. Thankfully, we can all grow and change, and my dad, who was a wonderful man, put away his hunting rifle not long after this photo was taken. But I will always regret ever having thought that a bear's place in the world was to be a rug for me to play on, and that's why I'm talking about it now. I wonder, are there any animals who you could be speaking out for but you didn't realize it until just now? If so, please join me in preventing any future regrets. Let's all use our voices for animals who need our help today. Thank you.